Hi everyone, if you're a designer using Rhino, then you need to understand that your keyboard is one of your most essential tools that you have, and most people don't use it right. Okay, a simple few keyboard shortcuts that you know is gonna dramatically improve your workflow and just make modeling a lot easier for you. Today, I'm gonna to share with you five of my personal keyboard shortcut sets that you can also download using the link below in the video description, and it's gonna change the way that you model. If you want to follow along with this video, you can use the link in the description box below to download the files. If this is your first time here, make sure you subscribe and hit the little bell so you don't miss any future videos. All right, guys, let's begin. So the first set of shortcuts you guys need to know is your display mode. Okay, so whether you want to work in a shaded mode, wireframe, rendered, you know, you want to be able to go through those on the fly and not have to come up here under display and start, you know, clicking around over here trying to figure out what's the display mode you need. So it's Control and Alt, and then it's W for wireframe, S for shaded, R for rendered. Okay, and I have my own extra ones that I use as well. So for example, I have this one where, you know, this is the shaded viewport, but this one takes the same colors from the shaded but turns it into a rendered viewport so I use this one quite a bit uh, I have a blue one that I use uh, just to see it as, you know like a, almost like a blueprint view I have an inverted one for CAD uh, I have this like cardboard view that I like to call this one and um, yeah and then you, of course you have your pen views etc so how do you do this right how do you actually switch between these on the fly where you find this is actually under tools and options and go to your keyboard settings so under keyboard uh, if you go down to where all your control alts are, so here we go, control alt, right? So control alt R is set display mode to rendered, right? S is say, set display mode to shaded, etc. You can add your own custom ones that you make here as well, but generally W, S, and R are the ones you're going to use the most. Okay, so that's where you need to use those shortcuts. The next set of shortcuts is this or rather it's really just one shortcut but it's so useful it's this one it just makes everything maximize right sometimes you just want to look at the geometries that you've created and not worry about you know all the toolbars command line etc you want all of that to go away and how you're doing that is actually full screen okay so there's a command called full screen but what I like to do is again just under keyboard you know same place as last time control and F I just put it as full screen. And the reason you have this little underscore here is if you're using Rhino in another language and you put an underscore in there, it's going to use then the English command. So it's just a good idea to just, you know, have a habit of using the underscore when using commands in these type of scenarios. So underscore full screen using control F pulls up the full screen mode. All right, the third set is more to do with visibility you know so we all know that control H and you should know this that control H can hide something okay so if you select some geometries and you use control H it will hide that okay and then you just type in show but I have a little alias which is SH to show something now what's an alias uh, if you come up here to tools and options so instead of keyboard if you go up here to aliases this is where actually all your uh, keyboard shortcuts are that have nothing to do with shift control alt you know these are just like things you type in and so you see that I, I use a bunch of them over here and the ones that I love is like H I have H for hide so I either I use H or control H and then SH for me is just to show so S is scale for me and then SH is show so you can just create new ones here Okay, so SH, and then you do underscore show, and that's how you'd create a new alias. And once you click OK, anytime you do that, anytime you type in the shortcut for it, like SH, it will run the full command. Okay, the other really useful one is isolate. Okay, so say I only wanted to work on this column and this uh, column behind it, this tile and this beam, for whatever reason, right? Uh, if I just wanted to work on those, I would want to isolate all of this. And then that way Rhino will hide everything else and just show those geometries. But the issue with that is that you don't want to always want to type isolate in. So I usually have an alias, which is the letter V for isolate. So anything I need to work on, um, I can just 
you know, say I want to work on these stairs and just these specific stairs, I can just use V. And since V is right next to the space bar, it's just like sliding your hand across V. So V and space bar together, pretty much isolate anything you need. And then SH to show. So those are really great for visibility purposes. I also have some Python scripts that I've written to do some other visibility uh, codes as well. So for example, if I wanted to hide the stairs, instead of coming here on the right hand side, not knowing where the stairs are in all of these uh, layers and then having to find it and then turn it off, you know, what I can do is just use HH, which I have another special command for that. and Anything I select, it will just hide that. So any of these columns, if I want to hide all the columns, I don't even have to look at the layers. I just hide all the columns, hide all of these. And now I'm just looking at these geometries. Same way, if I only want to look at the columns, you know, I can do VV. Okay, so I have another command for that called isolate layers. And you can download these. So if you use the download link uh, below in the video description, you can actually get those Python commands. And there's some instructions there on how to install them. And they just make it super easy because say I just wanted to work on the tiles and only the tiles. I don't have to look for them really. I just select one tile, do VV, and now it has isolated all those tiles for me. So it just makes working a lot faster. And the good thing is it doesn't actually hide the layers here. So I can still use show, right, and bring everything back instead of worrying about hiding actual layers. All right, so those have to do with visibility. The next one is taking screenshots, right? So when you take a screenshot in Rhino, usually you want to use view capture to file. This is like your friend over here, view capture to file. And when you use this, it just makes it so much easier than the print dialog to use view capture to file, so much better. Uh, but the problem is it opens this dialog and then you got to select some options and then it goes to this uh, other window where you actually enter the file name. Wouldn't it wouldn't be easier to just have a little shortcut and then it just opens this up and I can call this screenshot one, okay? And it automatically just creates a screenshot for you just like that. And, and let's have a look at that screenshot. There it is, so here's that screenshot and it's automatically set at a specific height and a specific width. And the way I do that, again, I'll show you by going into the aliases again. Under my aliases, I actually have this shortcut right here, VC. And what it's doing is, is running view capture to file setting the width at 1280 and the height at 720. And I'll just uh, drop this in the video description as well. So you can just copy and paste this for yourself. But it just becomes so much easier than to just type in VC, view capture, and it, it knows what to do. It knows to take a screenshot. And all you're doing is just entering the name of the file that you want to save it as. All right, the last set of shortcuts that I feel everyone should know is trying to make some shortcuts that actually help you with your workflow in terms of like layers, for example. So say I needed a line between uh, the end of this column and the end of this one, right? I need a line like this. Now the problem is, where does this line actually go, right? What layer am I supposed to put this in? Like it's, uh, you know, I've always had this trouble of all these floating geometries that are in layers they don't belong. So what I've done is I made some shortcuts. Like when I type in GG, it makes what's called a guide layer, you know? And now if I draw a line, it automatically puts it on that guide layer, right? So I don't have to worry about it. Anytime I'm in this situation, no matter what other layer I'm on, you know, like there's a bunch of different layers here. If I just type GG, it'll make this layer, or if it exists, it'll just go ahead and, and uh, you know, make that my active layer, which is extremely useful. Dash line, so if you use a set line type scale, and you enter 10, for example, like, you know, you'll have to scale it accordingly, but it's actually a dash line, All right? Sometimes I do want to draw it and I don't want it on a guide layer. I actually can make another temporary layer. I just type in red. Okay, so that's another shortcut for me. Just type in red. It makes, again, the very similar thing, uh, except it's, it's a red layer. And this time, whenever I draw, I'll just draw red. Again, I don't actually have to go here and create a new layer. It does it automatically using my shortcut GG and red. I think in the video description below, you'll also get this PDF. And this is essentially what I use where uh, as I make my shortcuts, I kind of uh, put them in this list over here. It just makes it easier for me to understand. And I've split them up into like display modes, uh, ones for my workflow, ones for some for my layers, how to manipulate geometry and some other quick commands as well. And yeah, this could be really useful. You can download this, print this out, have this next to your computer when you work. And yeah, I hope you, this has helped you guys and I'll see you in the next video. 
Thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, give us a thumbs up and make sure that you download any files using the link in the description box below. And I'll see you guys next time.